Hello and welcome to Capital Markets. I'm Tem Fulashadjo. Thanks a great deal for joining us this evening. Well, the equities market opened the week on a negative note, but recovered some losses in subsequent trading sessions before recording successive gains on Wednesday and, of course, on Thursday. However, on Friday, the market shed some of its gains uh, due to some mild profits taken and, of course, a bit of cold shoulder given to some of the mid to large cap stocks across counters with uh, fundamentals and then ended the week. Uh, on a green note. But the All Share Index recorded a gain of 0.2% week on week to 26,279.61 points, while investors gained some 37.4 billion naira as the market capitalization or equities capitalization in, uh, specifically rose uh, to 13.7 trillion naira. Uh, but the year to date losses actually remains at a negative of some 2.1%. Meantime, the Treasury bill space witnessed some sell-offs at the secondary market as average rates uh, advanced some 40 basis points week on week to 4.2 percent. Now, on the other hand, the domestic bonds market posted a negative performance as average yield across tenors advanced some 100 basis points week on week to 10 percent. Well, we're in the earnings season and quite a number of companies are beginning to release their numbers to the market in spite of the uh, coronavirus scourge that we have now in Nigeria. Uh, so we start with the only one we've got in our front here, and that is that of Access Bank, which came in yesterday. Access Bank, a uh, tier one financial institution, looks to pay 40 kobo per share in dividends to its shareholders. For the period ended December the 31st, 2019, bringing the total payouts to 65 kobo for the calendar year. Now, the proposal, which is based on shareholders' approval, is contained in the group's financial statement for full year 2019, where a gross earning of 666 billion naira is being reported for the period. Access Bank also posted a pre tax profit of 115 billion naira, which is higher than the 103 billion naira release or realized in the preceding year. Post-tax profit is printed at 97 billion naira as against, as against 94 billion naira with earnings per share of 2 naira, 90 kobo being reported. Now, the Nigerian Stock Exchange made history this week as the inaugural board members and shareholders voted in favor of resolutions that will lead to a successful demutualization of the Nigerian Stock Exchange, which is a 60-year-old boss. Shareholders unanimously cast their votes at an extraordinary general meeting, a development which the president of the exchange, Mr. Bimbola Ogumbanjo, has described as historic. We've operated for the past 60 years as a club of sorts. The profits, the, the surpluses the exchange has made has never been, is forbidden to be distributed. Now we have changed the species, the animal of the Nigerian Stock Exchange, and we are now entering the for-profit space. So you're going to see a more a, a competitive, a more competitive Nigerian Stock Exchange. You're going to see our governance structure strengthened. You're going to see employment, uh, an increase in employment, because obviously with the new uh, structure, we're going to have to recruit more personnel. And most, more importantly, you're going to see an exchange that has a Pan-African vision implement that strategy. So I think it's a very, very positive news today that all the resolutions that were moved were passed unanimously by the members. It tells you that the members were very excited. It's been coming uh, 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 for several years. It's been on the table since 2001, as far as I can remember. Of course, my predecessors have done a lot of work in trying to get it passed, but somehow or another, it didn't go through. In fact, we had to even get the legislature to pass a law to enable this uh, transition occur. So I'm very happy and I'm elated. After the EGM, what next? After the EGM? Yes. No, we will have to then go through the normal legislative processes, the court ordered meeting. They have to file in Abuja. They have to file in uh, the Corporate Affairs Commission with the Security Exchange Commission. The court has to sanction it. So it's just procedural issues left. And uh, we hope that that will be done in the, uh, in the short, very short term. 
question is what next after the votes for the resolution which was actually done unanimously by shareholders and the inaugural members of the board of the Nigerian Stock Exchange. We understand that uh, that structure, the Nigerian Stock Exchange, has now been unbundled into multifaceted um, organizations. But following that approval by shareholders to demutualize the stock exchange, uh, some more procedural work, of course, appears to be in the offing as the chief executive officer of the exchange, Mr. Oscar Yema, explains in a chat with the media after the extraordinary general meeting. He also talked about how members of the stock exchange resolved the concerns around the shareholding structure of the local boss, which was founded by some seven major entities some 60 years ago. Let's listen. Uh, this was a momentous occasion for us, the court ordered meeting and the EGM. Uh, now that uh, we've had unanimous votes uh, from the members in support uh, of the scheme, uh, the, the demutualization scheme, we would uh, take the documentation from these meetings to CAC and SEC, uh, get the CTC uh, version from uh, the CAC and go back to the court to get a court sanction. And then with that court sanction, we'll go back to CAC and to SEC and get final approvals. And then we also register the shares uh, with SEC. And then we'll credit the shares to the members. And at that point, they can hold, buy, sell over the counter because the shares belong, to, you know, they are, it's a PLC uh, shares. Um, and then the exchange itself will go into a uh, process of uh, unbundling and restructuring uh, through a change management process. As you know, the scheme calls for a non-operating hold co uh, and uh, an operating exchange in the subsidiary level. Uh, NGX regulation, which is a regulatory entity, uh, another independent company at, at the subsidiary level, and then uh, NGX real estate, uh, which uh, would hold all of our real estate um, uh, properties. Um, so that unbundling and operationalizing and moving staff and all of that uh, will occur and then we'll start running as a fully demutualized. Do you have any timeline you've Obviously, um, it depends on when we get all the regulatory approvals and the sanction of the court and, and the rest of that. Uh, from an implementation uh, perspective, uh, we believe that um, uh, once we've gotten uh, you know, these approvals, hopefully in the April, May, June time frame, uh, we'll start running. You know, our change management process. In terms of the structure, uh, which was a major concern to a lot of um, the, the founding fathers and probably mothers of the stock exchange, how did you resolve that aspect as it relates to what the members of the stock exchange had, what the ordinary members, the broker dealer community, and of course the management of the NSE had? So um, we took a lot of things into consideration, over 20 things. So I'm not going to start, you know, but uh, it's the contributions from uh, everybody, you know, their membership fees, I, uh, IPF fees, trade guarantee fund, contributions to uh, trading fees, uh, contributions to listing, contributions at general meetings, the list goes on and on. So um, after gathering all of that uh, and engaging with the various stakeholders, we arrived at what Everybody wasn't happy, but was fair. Uh, and uh, that is why you saw a unanimous vote uh, here today and got us uh, over the hump. Obviously, uh, anytime you execute a change management program, there are all kinds of challenges uh, from uncertainties uh, for the staff, which in this case were not, uh, we're carrying everybody along. So transparency, making sure everybody knows what we're doing is critical. Um, so you have that, and then running in that new, uh, new form in a way that you're efficient and uh, you, you extract all the benefits and synergies is a challenge, but it's a good challenge that we must uh, address. And then uh, that puts us in, in, a, in a form where we are competitive and we can begin to then add various verticals uh, to this story. So there's a lot of work ahead of us. Actually, the exchange was founded by seven members, the original founders of the exchange, and the federal government was uh, represented and continues to be represented. Today, they hold their membership as the bank of industry. 
and the bank of industry voted in favor of this uh, transaction that we're doing today. So, um, and at the state level, there are many state uh, investment authorities that are also members of the exchange, and they were here, and they also voted in support, as you know. So, everybody was carried along. Yes, everybody was carried along, and that was what necessitated the unanimous voting at the Extraordinary General Meeting. Now, the management of Lafarge Africa PLC was at the stock exchange this week to introduce some of its new uh, members of management and, of course, the boards to the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Uh, they went on the floor of the NSC and, of course, met with traders and, of course, uh, the broker-dealer community. Now, we had a chat with the chairman, uh, Mr. Bolaji Balogun, about the impacts of the coronavirus index case which has a bit of a link to the firm and of course we heard a word or two from him regarding the significance of the demutualization of the NSE of course because again he is his firm uh, another firm now uh, Chapel Hill Demham uh, Nigeria uh, uh, Limited was actually uh, appointed as a, a financial advisor to this deal or the demutualization of the Nigerian Stock Exchange let's listen I think um, this was an important decision we had to take as a company, as a board. We've worked very, very closely with our major shareholder, Lafarge Holson, um, to deliver what I think is a very, very good outcome. And the evidence of that will be apparent when our results are announced um, for 2019, you know, imminently. Um, I, I do think that the company needs to be commended um, for the incredible way in which it has responded very, very quickly. Um, firstly, in identifying, you know, the um, index um, patient um, with coronavirus in Nigeria. You were, you'll be well aware that it was a contractor, you know, employed by another company who was visiting, you know, our plant to do some work. Um, but the work that we did in collaboration with the state governments in Lagos and Ogun, and on that first night, I really have to commend our management team. Um, you know, they were up through the night. Um, you know, I probably was let off by them, you know, around 3 a.m. Um, but Khaled here certainly didn't sleep, you know, one ounce throughout that first night. And all of our colleagues in management, working with teams in Lagos and Ogun State, led by the governors of both states. And I think the reaction, you know, of the states, the preparedness, um, of Lagos and Ogun, the willingness on both parts, you know, to work collaboratively, because sometimes, you know, that always cannot be taken for granted. And the precautions, most importantly, that Lafarge had put in place. We were quite prepared as a company. We have a healthcare facility um, at the plant. The healthcare facility was in a state of significant readiness. We were able to identify everyone that had been you know, exposed to this individual, we were able to get them into quarantine. He was isolated very, very quickly and moved, you know, to a prepared facility in Lagos. And that state of readiness to a large extent is why this hasn't become, you know, a wider problem in the country. Um, for a few hours, obviously, we had to ensure that the entire plant was disinfected. All of that has been done. The plant is producing, um, um, and the plant is operational and people are able to go, you know, back and forth. You know, those people who are involved remain in quarantine and will do so, um, you know, for, you know, the you know, foreseeable, you know, future until everyone is confident that there's no issue around them. So I think the response level is an important factor and it really speaks to the very high standards that this company sets and this company operates under. Um, I know that you know over the last you know year and a half, um, you know we've been through a fairly difficult season. But I think there's some very significant achievements we've had as a company that you know must be spoken about. Um, first and foremost, we've reduced debt, you know, from more than a billion dollars of net debt to significantly less than a hundred million dollars. That has a big impact a on the on the on the future performance of the company. Um, you know, the business is profitable. We're working very, very, very hard on our route to market, working with logistics partners across the country. There's an energized workforce led by Khaled. And for me, that's been one of the most exciting things is, you know, his arrival. You can see it, you know, um, if you walk around the business, the energy levels, 
you know, are up. And when energy levels are up, you produce incredible results. Mr. Baloji Balog, the chairman of Lafarge Wapco Nigeria PLC. Well, it's another International Women's Day, but then find out after the break how some 78 stock exchanges around the world are observing the program. Thank you so much for staying with us and welcome back to Capital Market. Well, some 78 bosses across the globe who are mainly members of the World Federation of Exchanges, that's WFE, are observing the International Women's Day, which officially holds tomorrow. At the Nigerian Stock Exchange, executives of listed companies and other financial institutions discuss the theme for the year, each for equal, uh, which of course uh, has a way of being connected to listed companies and of course other firms. But then in a chat with the chairperson of Chemical and Allied Products, uh, Mrs. Awuneba Jumogobia, who was also the uh, keynote speaker yesterday at the events that held, uh, she speaks about the benefits of board diversity to companies. It's significant that um, today around the world, International Women's Day is being marked across stock exchanges with the ringing of the bell. And the theme for this year is each for equal. When you think about bell ringing, bell ringing is symbolic of a call to action. Bell ringing signifies celebration. Bell ringing signifies that something is going on. And each for equal represents the fact that this gender parity as a goal is everybody's business. It's not a women's issue. It's a women and men's issue equally. It's a corporation's issue. It's a, regulation, a regulator's matter. It is business of government. If we all collaborate and we play our own roles, in doing what we can in our space to move the needle, we will see significant progress. And it's important the that the conversation shifts from a focus to women to a focus to everyone, everyone as individuals and everyone as institutions. It's been proven by research that when you have diversity on a board, and specifically, when there is gender diversity, it translates to an increase in the bottom line. So it's actually in the interest of organizations to have this gender diversity on their boards. When you have gender diversity, then the conversations in the boardroom are richer, they're broader, and the perspectives that the various parties bring to the conversation and reach the outcomes which should then translate into business strategy. Well, MTN Nigeria is one of the listed companies on the Nigerian Stock Exchange and, of course, the second largest on the exchange itself. It's listed on the main board of the NSC. Uh, for insights into the discourse, uh, which is now each for equal, we got the company secretary, Mrs. Uto Okwana, to do some explanations. Today, as we close the market and as we ring the bell, We'll ring the bell in conjunction with several other exchanges around the world. And ringing the bell is a symbol for a call to action. A call to action to do what it takes to close the gender gap. A call to action based on this year's International Women's Day theme, Each to Equal, which means that each one of us must play our own role in ensuring that this issue is addressed once and for all. Together, we can make it happen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, well said. We're actually joining about 78 exchanges around the world to close uh, or to open the market, but it's all ring the bell for gender equality. Uh, and this is coordinated by the World Federation of Exchanges. 
well, we apologize for that mix-up. That was actually Mrs. Awuna uh, Ajumogobia again, who, um, of course, uh, spoke before Oscar Yema, the chief executive of the Nigerian Stock Exchange. But arising from the... Uh, International Women's Day, we understand that the Nigerian Stock Exchange and, of course, the International Finance Corporation have now reached an understanding for a three-year program where they will come up with data, uh, churn out uh, policy advocacy, uh, and, of course, uh, pursue what will be able to help us close the gap on uh, gender parity uh, in Nigeria. It is something that will be launched uh, any moment from now between the NSC and the IFC. IFC International Finance Corporation being a member of the uh, World Bank. Now, this is a company that also, also has its representation here in Nigeria um, locally. But then again, as part of what we've heard from the demutualization of the stock exchange, any moment from now we will have uh, the exchange which currently has a public liability company structure now tradable on the NASDOTC. The NASDOTC is the National Association of Securities Dealers. Uh, it is now an, ex an exchange on its own too. It is already demutualized uh, going by the structure that it currently has. It trades on itself right now, NASD PLC. Uh, but so uh, going forward, we will have the NSC tradable on the NASD platform pending when the NSC uh, becomes uh, listed on the Nigerian Stock Exchange, just like several other entities have actually traded on the uh, on the NASD OTC before they then uh, moved on up to the uh, stock exchange uh, proper. We have uh, quite a number of examples. We've had uh, the likes of Jai's Bank, which has. Um, actually uh, moved on to trade all the way from NASD now to uh, the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Jais Bank is a good example. And for co some other companies, when they get delisted from the Nigerian Stock Exchange, of course, they go back to the NASD OTC. So when this happens to the Nigerian Stock Exchange, uh, it will then move on from the NSD to see to the NSE for uh, 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 transactions and of course for trading. Uh, but currently we understand that plans for codification of the NSE uh, to trade on NSD O to see are ongoing. Well, we talked about the uh, International Finance Corporation and the Nigerian Stock Exchange reaching an understanding to come up with a program that will help promote gender equality in Nigeria. Let's listen to what uh, Ms. M.A.S. and Lori has to say and of course the Chief Executive of the Nigerian Stock Exchange, Mr. Oscar Yema, about this. We are announcing a collaboration called Nigeria to Equal. And I'm really, really pleased to be able to announce this today. Um, we have seen over the years that NSC has been a tremendously effective and engaged partner when it comes to issues regarding women's entrepreneurship, women's empowerment, women in the labor force. They really have, they're talking the talk walking the walk. And so for us, when we were thinking about which institution should we partnership to really advance and accelerate this agenda in Nigeria, the NSC was, was a logical partner. So again, we're really excited to be able to, uh, to announce this partnership. The program will support the private sector to increase women's participation as leaders, employees, customers, and entrepreneurs through favorable workforce policies Practices, products and services that target the women's market segment and deliberate measures that promote women's participation in corporate procurement. So from next week, of course, we know it is earnings season. We'll continue to watch out for more numbers, more earnings. So if you are an investor who buys shares based on dividends uh, declaration by companies, it is still the time for you to continue to watch the numbers as they crunch on the stock of the on the floor of the Nigerian Stock Exchange. And of course, if you're looking at the debt space, we've got the FMDQ OTC. If you're also looking at the unlisted securities market, the NASD OTC is the space to watch. That's it on the show for this weekend. I'm Temple Ashadju. Thanks a great deal for being part of the program. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.